ask you something. What the bollocks is that? You want people to think you're not a wrong un, and you do that to your face? I want all of that man's cocaine. He's cut a promo straight from 1986 and quite frankly, <sighs> It was magic. Dun, 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 dun. And a grammar slammer mania to you, Kevin Dunn. Where's the possessive apostrophe? You can't have a WrestleMania without a possessive apostrophe. Cena versus Theory is classic generation versus new generation. So you're telling me that Austin Theory is a new generation superstar from the early to mid 1990s, are you? Well, I guess the F in WTF, it stands for fluffy. This is clearly ruthless generation versus whatever the bollocks this generation is called. Dom eats corn the long way, apparently, and quite frankly, I would say to that, who the hell cares? Rhea Ripley is his mother. If Rhea Ripley said to me, Ross, I want you to stop eating corn the long way and eat the long way, I'd say, Rhea, I would do that for you. Oh, I feel like this man should be a WTF moment, but I'm not too sure why, even though he clearly didn't know where the cameras were. This song here literally said, I hope you're all coming, while then also speaking about the Mrs. Bollocks. All that was missing from this scene was come Tuesday himself, and then we'd have a proper come fest. A WrestleMania come fest. Bukaki mania. Right then, I got sent this right here a hell of a lot last night, and to be honest with you, I have no idea if it's right or not. But to be honest with you, so many people are saying the same thing, it can't not be true. Therefore, WWE employee, please Google where your stock images come from. Wins inside the Thunder Dome, says The Miz right here. And I was thinking Thunder Dome could be another name for your head, Thunder Bollocks, because this was way off. That's the Performance Center, silly. We all love the Performance Center, didn't we? No! Oh. Next time you go to a WWE show, take a sign with you and spread the good name of Cultaholic throughout the WWE Universe, just like that did there, and also Nicole did, and also Kenneth and Trudy the Wonder Dog did. Thank you all. Corey Graves tied that tie, you know? Well... Now I know it's a John Cena match and as with all John Cena matches you can hear him calling more spots than a dermatologist with an acne ridden teenager but it's been so long I've got to make a WTF moment for every single time we heard John Cena call a spot during that match with Austin Fury taking this totalizer on this WTF moments video to 98 moments already and next up we have Titus World sliding into the WTF moments by labeling Valerie Haller to give her her full name or Valhalla to give her her gimmick name, Sarah Logan. He called Valhalla Sarah Logan. <laughs> now imagine somebody legit passing the messages from the Viking gods to her real life Viking cohorts being called Sarah. What's Titus been smoking? Weed. Probably. Mago, 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 mago. Here's a direct quote from Michael Cole to Titus World Slide when he said, Bet you're glad you didn't have to face anybody like the Viking Raiders in your career. And I reckon in this moment, Crown Jewel 2019, it would have been saying, Val, hala! That didn't quite work, but we're relating things to Vikings here, okay? Look there! That's from Cage Match. Titus literally did. Everybody calm down. Michael Cole said there was no disqualification in that men's tag team showcase match. So everything they were doing, it was completely fine. Nobody tagging. It was all fine. No WTF moments. Chad Gable should be in the main event scene. Olympic wrestler, funny man, monster masher. That chaos theory roll through German souple to Braun Strowman was a double WTF moment, but in all the best ways possible. And then we have Braun Strowman nearly turning into Boeing Flown Man. Yes, that works, doesn't it? Because a man that size, that big old bastard, he turned into a literal aeroplane. Ass sweat! And also a WTF moment for Titus O'Neil taking the piss out of Otis for being a sweaty man. He's a sweaty man, he kept saying, even though we all know, don't we? Triple H likes big sweaty man. And Triple H likes big sweaty man. And Triple H likes those large men who perspire. And then we get to the moment of all WrestleManias combined where Angelo Dawkins flattened Braun Strowman right in the chest. And I was doing the <laughs> come on LFG kids like Angelo was. It was that bloody good. And all I was doing right here was thinking about Big E and his raging boner because never have two meaty men slap more meat than in that moment there. I'm so pumped up right now. Yeah! And that is the highest a professional 
professional wrestler has ever been. I mean ever. And I include RVD with a massive 20 bag of high grade in that right there. Wah wah wee wah. That splash there is very nice. And wah wah wee wah. That showcase match was all kinds of wah wah wee wah. I got a zip line for my birthday. <laughs> Those were the words of Logan Paul at WrestleMania 39. And in that moment, I was thinking to myself, Logan Paul, I would love to stab you with a fork right in the dick. But then this monstrosity came out and I was thinking, Logan Paul, I want to stab you with two forks, one in the dick, one in the arse. Imagine saying that would be the scene at WrestleMania, man. For goodness sake, WrestleMania 39, the showcase of the Isotonics. WrestleMania 39, the granddaddy of them, Paul. I hate that prick so much. Jeff Jarrett is everywhere all the bastard time, isn't he? Now imagine hearing this from a professional wrestling commentator while Logan Paul is doing a professional wrestling match. A modification of one of the Nokis. That's Antonio Anoki, Anoki's greatest submissions. And I was thinking, what's next? KSI doing a slight remix on Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? Quite easy for me to say. No, not quite, dear viewer, not quite. And I'm sure I might have been slipped some LSD at this point in the night. Because I'm sure, and it's not confirmed, but I am sure that KSI, right, he was revealed to have been dressed inside of a life-size bottle of Prime. You know, the energy drink that KSI and Logan Paul do. He was dressed in a life-size bottle of that and he was taking a selfie video of himself this is KSI dressed as a life-size bottle of Prime taking a, a little selfie video of himself with Seth Rollins laid on the table while Logan Paul was going to do a splash off the top of the turnbuckle over to the floor through uh, Seth Rollins and through the announce table but Seth Rollins pulled the life-size Prime bottle on the announce table while Logan Paul was going doing Triple H's celebration for goodness sake his little taunt his little from the start of his matches for goodness sake the middle of his entrance I don't know what's going on right now and then in the process of going <laughs> Logan Paul couldn't see the KSI the life-size bottle of Prime was pulled off the announce table by Seth Rollins the very colourful man which meant Logan Paul did a splash through KSI who was dressed as a life-size bottle of Prime and I don't know what was going on I need to sit down but some say that Logan Paul in this moment he bottled it <laughs> while some others say that KSI was in the prime of his life <laughs> Logan Paul did a GTS, kind of. So in the space of one match, Logan Paul is stealing from Antonio Inoki, Triple H, and now CM Punk. And I know what you're saying at home, dear viewer. Ross, where the hell is gimmick infringement Kane? But let me tell you, that's so much gimmick infringing in one professional wrestling matchup that gimmick infringement Kane died. Look at him, man. He's rigid. Logan Paul, he killed my boy. Mago, 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 Mago. Direct quote from Mago Cole this time when he says, Lita is trying to get into this matchup to be part of her first WrestleMania since 2002. And I guess that, or oh, that, didn't even count then. Even though that was one of, if not the standout match of WrestleMania 22. And that was the start of a new generation, a much better generation of women's professional wrestling. But no, it didn't count. So here is a conversation Michael Cole and Corey Graves had at this point in the night. I believe your legal competitors are Becky Lynch and Bailey. I think I'd be willing to bet our official has no idea. Well, look who he is. Of course he's got no idea. Look at the state of him. And I've got to ask the question, what has eyebrows done to Michael Cole and Corey Graves? I call him eyebrows because his eyebrows are absolutely fantastic, dear viewer. But I've got to know why on earth were Michael Cole and Corey Graves taking the piss out of him for no real reason? What's he done? Dom went to jail in his prison gear. Well, it looks like he's worked himself into a shoot there, brothers. But a big shout out to the guy who was clearly heard shouting at WrestleMania from the crowd. Holla, if you hear me, while the sirens are going off at the start of Dom. Dom's entrance, and while we're here speaking about Steiners, F. Rick Steiner, right up his ass, the massive asshole. Rey Mysterio coming out at WrestleMania 39 to avenge his convict son, who's done terrible things to Rey's family, Rey's wife, Rey himself, while being driven to the ring in a low rider in a tribute to his dead best friend. That low rider, of course, was driven by Snoop Doggy Dog, who probably wasn't even legally allowed to drive that low rider at that point in the night. Let's be honest, it's Snoop Doggy Dog. This all proves why professional wrestling is unmatched. In 
in the world of things. Nothing comes close to professional wrestling. It's fantastic. It's random. I can't believe that's a sentence. But then it all went a little bit Pete Tong, a little bit wrong in my opinion. I was thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, there's a blood feud going on. Father versus son. The son's done terrible things to the father and the rest of the family. The son's got a very nice girlfriend who the father probably doesn't approve of. It's a blood feud. They want to kill each other. But cinnamon toast. This, of course, calls for cinnamon toast crunch and the cinnamon toast crunch man. There's a time for this sort of thing and this specific match on the card was not that. Disqualification. Outside interference by Angie. Ring the damn bell. Call the thing off. I mean, I, I mean I, well and Angie, good on you for getting Dom. Yeah, oh, ru rules, oh, 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 yeah, Angie. Now at this point in the night, I was thinking to myself, if only WWE had a tag team potentially who might have said something like, come to Puerto Rico, the shining star of the Caribbean. But they don't have one, do they? Uh, I have never seen a German suplex taken on as much face as that one right there. In my opinion, we need to rename Charlotte Flair Marv because she took that one right on the schnoz. It's a Home Alone reference. Amy? Since when was Mammy called Amy? I know a letter just fell off. Go along with a joke. When was she called Amy? So I went from, ah, look at Michael Cole's reaction to Pat McAfee coming out for yet another shock appearance in the WWPLV. It's like Michael Cole is the dog you leave at home most of the day for under four hours, of course, anymore would be irresponsible, you bastards. When you pull up on the drive, the dog gets on the window, still like, oh my god, my family's home. That's what Michael's like when he sees Pat McAfee, when he's not expecting to see Pat McAfee. And then I went, shock, horror, WWE are rewriting their history once again, even under the Triple H regime. And that's because Michael Cole claimed as Pat McAfee was making his way to the ring, there's only two undefeated announcers in WrestleMania history. There's Michael Cole and there's Pat. Even though, as we all know, last year at WrestleMania 38, Pat lost a legitimate professional wrestling match too. Name redacted with the crappy moustache. And I guess we need to reserve several more WTF moments for the rest of that Maze and Pat McAfee and Snoop Doggy Dog segment and that other American footballing man because quite frankly, in my opinion, it didn't quite land. It was nice to see Pat, but the rest of it, it fell as flat as Kofi Kingston's tit, which is very, very flat indeed. A PWG logo and a Super Dragon mask on the tights of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn you love to see it. It's a lovely, wholesome WTF moment. El Generico would be proud, said Michael Cole, as Sami Zayn was doing Sami Zayn things in the main event of WrestleMania 39 Night 1. As you there at home can tick off another thing you didn't expect to see on your list of things I don't expect to see at WrestleMania 39. This list at this point, given what we saw on WrestleMania 39 Night 1, is going to be as long as Jericho's list. Nobody has ever kicked out of the 1D, said Michael Cole, as Sami Zayn kicked kicked out of the 1D. I went and looked on Google. I couldn't find anything. Therefore, it might well be true. A factoid like that, that might well be true in professional wrestling. You head for the border, everybody. You grab 2 each animal. I've got nothing apart from this weird thing once again. We're off to the border. The end is nigh. The end is nigh. Time to run away. The end is nigh. Nigh. Go back and watch this bit of that main event last night and you will hear Sami Zayn turning into the Andrea True Connection singing their hit song, More, More, More. Oh. <laughs> more, more, more. He wanted Jay Uso to hit him some more, and when Jay wouldn't do it, Sammy kept saying, more, more, more. But I have never heard so many spots called in a single professional wrestler match than I did in that main event tonight one of WrestleMania 39, and it was no fault of the wrestlers in the ring. They were all whispering underneath their beards and whatnot, but the ring microphones were turned all the way up, so we heard everything they were doing. I'm sure we heard Kevin Owens' thighs chafing together at one point as well. It's like a balloon rubbing against another balloon. It's gnarly. Yes, but they were whispering like little mice. Everything was heard. Bollocks to the ring crew microphone, people. Yeah, take that one.